Good morning. Welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, hi, hello, my name is Maya and I am your host of Motivation and Muscles with Maya Ting. We have a new co-host. We have a couple of co-hosts. We have <laughs> Poppy. The ginger lime is by far my favorite. Um, these things are expensive. These, how many ounces is this? Eight? Eight ounces, I guess. Just a regular um, soda size. This right here might be $2.50 for this, but oh my goodness, it has probiotics in it. It's gut health friendly. And yeah, I love them. So I pick them up from time to time. Not very often because it's expensive. But I have one of these because I am munching on They are so good. Okay, let's back up. What time is it? It is three o'clock in the morning. I have literally been up since about 2.45. I've been munching on these and watching YouTube. And let me fix myself. Ooh. And I was just like, why don't you go ahead and just talk to your friends for a little bit? I gotta do this hair too, I cannot. And of course, my cats are like, what are you doing up? Ugh. Okay, so I got my cherries, got my soda. Now we can chat. So I've come to think that when I wake up like this in the morning, it's a combination of things. Um, number one, um, I'm used to waking up but early in the morning to go to the gym. Number two, the medication that was given to me, what is it called? Um, it's an asthma medication. I can't rem remember the name, but I told you guys about it yesterday. It has something in it that promotes headaches and can give you insomnia, singular, that's it. So I was telling my husband yesterday, I said, man, anytime I'm prescribed something that has a side effect of insomnia and headaches, I just don't even need to take it. Even if those um, side effects are like at the very bottom of the list, I don't need to take it. So I think I slept good, but I think um, I can go to sleep some more, which tells me I still have some of that singular in my system. I've only been taking it for about a week, but that's long enough to kind of keep me up. So. Let me open up my poppy. Mm. You know what this reminds me of? A not so strong ginger ale. I get these from um, Whole Foods here in Atlanta. And the cherries I got from um, Trader Joe's. But outside of those cherries, I also picked up the regular red ones. Same container, Trader Joe's. This might've cost $4.99. So I got two of these. Plus when I went to Whole Foods to pick up four of these, I picked up a bag of cherries, just regular red cherries. I ate those yesterday in my stomach. If you need it to use the bathroom, eat some cherries. Mm. Guess what I have? Mm -hmm. The book. I had to go ahead and just order another one. I don't know where the original one is. I do know that we are on chapter four. So later on today, I'm gonna go in my car, turn the car on, put the air on, and we're gonna read chapter four and just briefly talk about it. 
So um, just want to let you know, let you guys know that I didn't forget. We're going to continue. And the name of the book is God Will Use This for Good, Surviving the Mess of Life by Max Lucado. If you need to catch up, um, chapters one, two, and three are already recorded and up on my YouTube channel. Just search for um, the videos that are that have reading, the word reading in parentheses. Chapter one, two, and three already recorded for you. So I will definitely, oh, my cat. Oh, that big cat is, anyway. So yeah, I'm up. So I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do? I tend to think that when I'm up super early, when I don't have to, I know it's mainly because of the medication, but I'm sitting here thinking, does God want me to talk to him? God, what do you want? What, what do you want from me? What do you want? You want my attention. You got it, right? But I don't know. I think... God really wants me to talk to him about the situation with my dad. I think that whole situation is weighing heavy on my heart. Not heavy enough to unblock him. Mm -mm. But it's just sad when you have to kind of separate yourself from someone who is toxic. It's sad. Excuse me, sad but necessary. Sad but necessary. And you know what? As my channel grows, I know that I am going to run into people who are going to say mean and nasty things. Um, I know I'm going to run into people who are going to be toxic online. But this is my thought pattern about it. And this correlates with my dad, too. My dad lives all the way in Hollywood, Florida. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. What? You don't live next door. I don't have to see you. And I can love you from afar. That's how I plan on dealing with the people who mean me no good on Beyonce and Luther Vandross' good internet. Get upset for what? Wait a minute. Speaking of neighbors. Okay, so I have a neighbor on the left side of me. He's a single man and he's a strange one. He rarely has company, which is fine. And I know you're probably saying, well, why does it matter that he rarely has company? Because it matters. Listen to the story, sit back. So everybody, I live in a cul-de-sac, right? So everybody over here knows that he's a bit mm, like a wackadoodle. So when I see him in passing, we might do a wave or we won't, not a big deal. But my kids come by, like my kids come by, they have their own cars, they'll come by, you know, and normally when my kids come by, they'll park in front of my mailbox or they'll park right behind me. It just depends. Um, they normally come in to the house after like later in the evening when the mail has already run. So it doesn't matter if they park in front, of my, in front of my mailbox. Plus they're my children. It doesn't matter, right? Well, my oldest daughter parked on the side before the mailbox. And then my youngest daughter parked in front of my daughter, but they were not on his property line. Okay, I just want to say that. 
So his garbage runs every Monday. They pick up his garbage every Monday. So Sunday evening, he put his garbage dumpster right by my daughter's car, like almost hitting it, right? He didn't though, in his defense, he didn't. But he was making a statement, right? So I thought nothing of it. And then the whole thing with my nephew on Mother's Day went down. When we got home from the country, um, everybody was pretty much out of it anyway. But we noticed that it was a statement. That was Mother's Day. So I said, you know what? Let me go talk to him. Maybe, you know, he thinks we're on his property line, you know, or he thinks my kids are, have parked on his property line, whatever the case may be. So I went over there. I went over there and he always keeps his door open. The screen door is always locked, but the main door is always open. So I ring the doorbell and let me stop right here. We don't have a relationship other than a high and buy. However, I have had company and, or my daughter has had company here and it, it will be her friends, right? And her friends will be parked like on my side of the property, but just parked on the side of the road. This young man, the neighbor, has come over to my daughter's girlfriend's car and tried to open the car while she was in it. Why are you doing that? So I explained to him, listen, if there's ever a problem with guests who come to my home, please do not confront my guests. Come to the owner of the home. I think that's only fair because guests are guests, right? And if they make a mistake, they do something wrong, they park some somewhere they're not supposed to, it's the owner that they're visiting, the owner of the home that they're visiting is the one that's responsible. That's my opinion. So for example, if you, Fit Fam, come to my home and you are parked on his property line, he doesn't need to confront you. He needs to say, you know what, Maya, your people who are visiting are on the property line on my property line, can you have them move? Not a problem. That's how we roll. But do not confront and do not come to my company's car and try to open the car. What are you doing? This is what we're working with here. So Mother's Day, I go over there, I ring the doorbell. Now mind you, I'm tired because we have been out all day dealing with the situation with my nephew. He comes to the door. Hello, Charles. Hey, I said, um, what's going on? And he was like, what do you mean? I said, you know, the garbage can and, you know, yada, yada, yada. He was like, oh, no, there's, there's no problem. I said, well, are you sure? Because you're making a statement. Plus, he doesn't even park in his driveway anymore. He doesn't park in his driveway. He parks right at his property line. I'm just going to have to show you guys. I'm sure this is majorly confusing to you guys. Um, but he's now parking on the street, not in his driveway. I mean, that's your property. Do whatever. So I said, um, are my girls parked wrong or whatever? He was like, no, no, no. No problem. And then he starts to get loud. So I said, Charles, bring it down. Bring it down. So he looks over my shoulder. He's like, hey. So I'm like. It's my youngest daughter on the street, like just making sure I was okay. So I said, um, I, I turn back and I look at him and he's like, oh, 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 happy Mother's Day. I said, thank you. So are you sure there's not a problem? Because you know, if there is a problem, you can always just say, hey Maya, this is the problem and I'll fix it, I'll rectify it, no big deal. No, 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 it's no problem, you know. And, he, and he's just telling me there's not a problem, but I can tell there is a problem because he keeps talking. So I walk away, I turn around and walk away. He's like, yo, 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 but you know, you're walking away and you don't wanna let me talk. I said, but you said there's no problem. If there's no problem, there's nothing to talk about. I said, but this is the thing, Charles, I would appreciate 
if my company, if my children, if they do something wrong in your eyes, if you come to me or come to my husband. And then I walk away. Two days later, my daughter is in her car about to leave, my oldest one. Charles comes out and he's in his car. My daughter, you know, does a roundabout because again, we live in a cul-de-sac and she's doing the roundabout so she can leave. So he flags her down. And he says to her, hey, I just want to let you know your tail light is out. My oldest daughter rolls her window down and says, what? He says, your tail light is out. She was like, are you supposed to be talking to me? <laughs> My kids are petty. Let me back up. Something that I said to him that I wish I didn't say. In the midst of us going back and forth and, and right before I turn around to leave, I said to him, and I hate I said this, because we all know in this cul-de-sac that you're a wackadoodle. Maya. I hate that I said that. I really do. But I don't hate it enough to go over there and knock on his door and apologize. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, mm -mm. Hmm. But for real, we all know in this cul de sac that he's a little interesting. <laughs> weird but anyway hmm. and nowadays you have to really watch out how you speak to people because people killing you I know y'all heard about the black lady I don't even know where this took place but the black lady had her children outside playing the white lady was calling them all sorts of um racial slurs, talking to the kids, get off my property, stay off my grass. Mind you, this is a whole apartment complex. You do not own the apartment complex, ma'am, but need, needless to say. Kids ran home. The white lady took the iPad that the kids left by accident. She took it, and then when the kids came back to get the iPad, she threw the iPad at them. I think hit one in the head. I don't know. So, of course, they run home, tell their mother. Their mother confront the woman. She knocks on the woman's door. The woman from the inside of her own home takes a shotgun, shoots or takes a gun, shoots through the door, killing the mother in front of her baby, in front of her son. It's wicked out here. And my next door neighbor, he keeps his door open, front door open, back door open, screen door locked. And then he keeps particular windows open. And my oldest daughter used to always tell me, mommy, he listens to our conversations over here. You know, when we're outside talking or whatever, he's listening. And I'm like, he's listening. And, and he does. We, we've caught him a couple of times. Um, and not to mention, we have a security system that whistles when we come in or out. So he's always alerted when to come and spy. I don't know. He's, he's strange, but whatever. He was strange. When my mom was living, just strange. But whatever. 
Yeah, he's a strange one. He's one of those you can't even hate. You just look at him and be like, oh. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. So, yeah. Why are you guys up? Why? I would love to know. It only has four grams of sugar. I can't really see. 12 ounces, a regular can of soda. Mm -hmm. Only 20 calories. Ginger lime. Mm. That's it. So listen, I'm gonna go. I'm officially up. I wish my treadmill was down here and not upstairs in my bedroom. because I would walk. I could get on my spin bike. I don't know. Should I clean up? Not much to clean, but I could be dusting. It's dusty over here. I don't know. I think I'll clean up a little bit, but I'm going to go. And I will see you guys in a few hours because we're doing chapter four. We're going to do chapter four today. Yeah. So let me go. I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah, I guess I'll clean up. Y'all have a good one. Bye. Oh, try some of this if you can. It's poppy. It's called poppy ginger lime. It's awesome. I'll talk to you later.